Before we jump into this week's video, make sure you jump over to flagfootballwithcoachd.com. I have everything you need to crush it as a complete coach. You can find my playbooks here. If you're looking for plays and wristbands, this is definitely a must. Then you have your complete coach package, my number one seller. A lot of coaches are asking me for situational plays, so my play bundles are here. Everything can come in 5v5, 6v6, or 7v7. If you're just looking for wristbands, you can find them here. Then you have my uh, play builder software. You can import all the plays you purchase from me and customize and build from scratch your entire playbook. And then of course, I have my equipment that I just launched, my clipboard that you see me use every single video. Then I just launched my cones and agility ladder here. Use it in every practice. If you want it all, you can grab the complete coach kit here. And then finally, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, click on work with coach D and I would love to work one-on-one -on -one with you. Make sure you subscribe to get 10% off everything instantly. I've got it all here for you. Everything you need to crush it as a complete coach. Now let's jump into this week's video. Hey everyone, this is Coach D. Today we're talking about goal line defense. Look, you've been asking for it, so I am going to deliver. We have to get this down because our games are dependent on usually one to two. If we have a tight game going, one to two points can make the entire game. So we have to get this right. We want to create a shutdown defense so that no matter what, when they get within 10 yards, five yards of that end zone, we're shutting them down. So what are we talking about today? Today we'll define what goal line defense is. When do I activate this different defense, right? What about the formations? What type of formation should I use? And who do I put at what position, right? We'll go over 5v5, 6v6, 7v7. We'll talk about zone versus man. How about if I'm running only man? Do I switch to zone right here at the end zone? Do I go from zone to man? I mean, what is going on? What do I do, coach? I got your back for you. All right, let's dive right in. Again, if you haven't gone to flag football with coach D.com and grabbed your playbook, man, coaches are loving it. Make sure you get your wristbands. It just makes it a lot easier. We also have our play builder where you can build these defense formations right into the play builder. So make sure you jump on that. All right, let's jump right into what is goal line defense, right? I've got a nice little formation here, but when do I activate this? Well, usually, if I'm going for two points after I've scored, I'm popped out to the 12-yard line. So at the 12-yard line, I'm going to activate this defense, okay? So anything about 10 yards in, right? 12 yards in. If they're going for that two point, I usually can activate this. If I'm 10 yards in and they haven't scored, I'm activating this. Now, if I'm five yards in, without a doubt, I am activating this. This is going to happen. No matter what, I am putting this into place. So if you're at the five yard, usually at the 10 yard, and I'll let you decide, but on the 12 yard line, I'm okay with activating this that we're going to talk about today okay now when it's age group right you'll see a lot of this is very similar to what i do at the younger age group where i have a nice line in front right i'm shutting that down because they're usually running about 80 percent of the time maybe even 90 percent so i like to have a nice line right here in front so you'll see a lot of the similarities right of that that you'll see right here so age group I'm okay with you using this from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade because it's the same type of principle. We want to shut down that short game, give them enough coverage here, but at the same time give what I call the monster here in the back so I do have somebody who has field awareness who's able to attack the entire field if necessary. Okay. Now let's talk about man versus zone. If you've been running man this entire time and you have equal matchups, even equal matchups the entire time, then I wouldn't switch that up, okay? I would not switch that up. If you have, let's be very clear, man-to-man -man for me is whenever I have equal matchups and I can easily shut them down. I have a little bit more of a power, so whether it's speed, whether it's agility, whether it's field awareness, I'm taking away the ball, all of that, then I would keep that. All right, and if they can just walk up there, I already know who I have, confidence, boom, I've got it, I'm doing that, 100%. So keep it the way that it is. Now, if you've been running zone this entire time, in practice, 
you have to make sure if you're moving to man at the goal line that you practice this constantly every single week and you practice it over and over so it's automatic so let's say I call it tiger green this is my goal line defense called tiger green so I know as a player I know exactly who I'm matching up with and now I know for man to man I am going to be within an arm's length of that person so that's my person right now I'm going from a zone defense that you've seen me run all these years to man to man then I need to make sure they know okay I've already told them, all right, you're matched up with this person. I've been watching. I've got the matchups in my mind. As a defensive coach, I've already, yep, I've seen what they can do on offense. You're matched up with them. You're matched up with them. I can quickly get to the line and go. But you got to practice that. You have to practice that over and over and over, all right, so that they're not like, well, who do I have? What am I taking? Because a lot of times, offenses that are effective will be hurry up offense down here in the red zone so they'll come out quickly and go so that they can get in the end zone so you need to if you're switching if you're switching you need to immediately have okay you have green shorts you have uh, orange shoes you're gonna have right so that is critical all right for me I like to keep it zone personally so I keep it zone so let's talk about what does that zone defense look like now for 5v5 I'll show you that then we'll go 6v6 and 7v7 let's say this is the line of scrimmage right goal line is let's say five yards in so I've, I've kind of brought everything closer for the video but I like to have them about a yard this is four defenders about a yard off of the end zone okay so I want them to be in front of the end zone what happens a lot of times is if they're on let's say that this is the they're, they're actually standing on the end zone line what will happen wide receiver even the center will just come over do a quick little curl they'll be standing just inside they'll catch the ball right here touchdown extra point so I need to make sure that my <coughs> My players know exactly where the line to gain, the end zone is. Make sure that they're popped about a yard or two in front of that line so that they can block that down or they can pull that flag right before. Now, something very important to know is in most leagues, in order to score, right, you have to get your flag past the end zone, past it. So they can't do this like Mahomes thing where they're putting the ball out. They can't reach. So that's very important for them to know. All they have to do is if they catch the ball in front of the goal line, pull that flag. Just pull the flag. I know a lot of people want to go for the ball. They want to try to intercept. They want to be the hero. Just pull the flag before they step in. Because right here, if I'm one yard off, one inch off, and I can pull that flag, I stop that. All right, now this is 5v5, but if I had 6v6, I would just move this over and I would put another one equal, right, equal back here. Now these, this uh, safety is going to be about five yards into the end zone. Maybe, maybe, it depends on, but probably about three to five yards into the end zone. So if I had 6v6, I'd have one here and I'd have one here. If I was doing 7v7, I'd have an additional one here, an additional one here and then I'd have my monster safety right here in the middle. Let's talk about who should be in each position. Now look, if you've been beat on the outside, they keep on doing these out patterns, they keep on doing this, you gotta bring up a cornerback, you gotta have somebody with some agility, some speed, somebody who can quickly like swap that down, right? Then that's who I would put here and here. So if I have cornerbacks, I might put them here, right? on this cone and on that cone on the outside corners. If I keep getting beat on the inside, they just keep on hitting me right in the middle, then I might bring that cornerback on the inside, all right? So it really depends on what type of offense that I've been seeing. Am I getting crushed in the middle or am I getting crushed on the outside, okay? What I do like to do is I like to put my linebackers 
in the middle right here. These are my flag pullers so that they can quickly jump in and just grab that flag no matter what happens. Okay, I want to, uh, and so if I'm getting constant, let's say quick slants right across the middle, right, and they just keep on hitting me, I might have my son, who's usually my rusher, and I might have him in here so that he can pull that flag, let's say if they catch it or if they don't. So linebackers usually in the middle, cornerbacks on the outside, unless I'm getting beat constantly by somebody right up the middle, then I might put a star cornerback right here, okay? As always, my monster, my super speedster, my field awareness, some usually a little bit taller at the, at the upper levels, just so they can, right, swat that down. Just so, right? Now, if, let's say, I keep on getting beat with these corner routes, then what I would do is I would bring this safety, I would tell them to cheat to one side, and I might pop this guy back. So I can get full coverage over here and still get the full coverage there, okay? It's gonna happen so fast that I can't have this person just, right? If I know that I have a strong receiver, on that side, then I might choose to have this person step back just a little, just a little, just in case, right? They need to do a nice little back pedal to win that, that corner of the end zone. That's just what I'm, I'm aware of, okay? All right, so I have cornerbacks on the outside. I have my linebackers in the middle. I have my safety in the back. If I'm doing 6v6, then I've popped a safety here. I've got a safety here covering the back of the end zone. And then if I have 7v7, then I have uh, a middle safety, right? That's kind of like that free safety of, of available and they can go anywhere super fast. They have field awareness. They're looking, they're seeing who's doing what, right? So that is what I like to do with my normal type of defense. Now check this out. Sometimes if I'm getting beat in the middle by one kid and it just keeps happening, then I might put my safety right here. I might move my safety up top and I might move these guys back onto the goal line. But I might put that person right here in the middle instead of being back in the end zone like this because they don't they haven't done any of these longer like over the top type of throws. They're just doing these quick, right? Especially if you're outside of the what we call a no run zone. A lot of times from the 5 yard line in, you have what's called a no run zone. That means you cannot do any passes. This is usually fourth and up, right? If I have something like that, but they keep on getting me right in the middle, then I might move that, that safety up to right here, okay? If I do have runners, they're constant and they're right outside of that no run zone, then again, I might do that as well. I might have my, my safety, super agile, can pull flags, can pretty much do anything and everything. I might have them right in the middle, ready to, if they hand off, boom. So I might bring them up. So it really depends on if there's a no run zone, right? If they're beating me right in the middle with like that short pass pretty much every single time, right? Otherwise, I will pop this one back and make sure we have coverage in the end zone. Let's recap here. First of all, goal line is definitely five yards in, yes. Then also with my two point conversion, 12 yard line in, I do like to activate this a lot of times just to make sure I'm covering short, right? And I also have my safety in the back to make sure that everything is covered in the end zone. Zone versus man to man, if I've continued to use man to man and I have good matchups, then I will use man-to-man -man in my goal line defense. 
if I am switching from zone to man to man because I feel like I can get some equal matchups, practice it, practice it, practice it. As the defensive coach, make sure you've already done your assignments before you get to that goal line because it's fast. They usually are running on you really fast. They're up on the line and you're like, wait, wait, wait. You don't want any of that confusion. You need to practice that a ton. Formations, again, I like to have my cornerbacks on the outsides. I like to have my linebackers on the insides. We're usually about, I would say, one to two yards in front of the end zone. And that gives me good coverage. Make sure that they are always looking at where the end zone is and they are in front of it so that people don't catch the ball and ah, they pulled the flag ah, as they were in the end zone. Remember, pulling the flag, you wanna do that before they cross the line because there's no reaching. They can't reach to get it, they can't jump, they can't dive to get it. It's usually pull the flag. I know you wanna go for the ball, but at the same time, pull that flag at the handle so that you can make sure you get that right you save the day all day long okay if i have this four one situation right if i'm getting beat deep then i'm going to keep this here but if i'm getting beat deep let's say on this side then i might pop this cornerback i just want them to be aware that they might have to follow back right they might have to drop back into coverage if I kept beating, getting beat by this wide receiver on this side. That means my, my safety here would not be able to move over on this side. Okay, so little adjustments that you're making along the way. Otherwise, I'm keeping it just like this. I usually do not rush in my goal line defense. I like to keep it tight. I like to keep them in coverage, and I'm going for the flag. All right, go for the flag. If I'm in the end zone, yes, I'm going to drop that. I want to just slap it down. Slap that ball down. That's all I'm trying to do. All right, guys, there it is. This is your goal line defense video. Look, please let me know. Are there other things you're doing, little tips that you found to be effective to shut this thing down, whether they've scored already, whether you're trying to prevent the touchdown, whatever it is, what are some of the best practices you have found to shut down that goal line? Oh yeah, make sure you grab the complete coach package. It will give you everything you need to crush it as a complete coach, whether you're brand new or you're just looking for an edge after a year, a two year, a three season, right? Whatever your tenure is, you have to get the complete coach package. And if you're looking for wristbands, make sure you get the plug and play bundle that comes with all of the complete coach package, 200 plays, 35 drills, 32 practice schedules, plus you get 10 of these wristbands for all of your players. It works, coaches are loving it, get some. Look, this is Coach D. If you like what you see, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.